All right, so this truly is round number three. For this, we turn to the empty cookie jar that each has a question. Each question will be unique to each candidate. Each candidate will have two minutes to answer. The time will begin after I read the question. That way I can stumble a little bit. So I'm, this is, this is for you, Derek. All right, are you ready? The questions are in Latin, so it will be your job to translate them. I'm from St. Mary's, I'm ready. I, that's right, that's, yeah, that's true. Just okay. kidding. And you can do a phone a friend if you need to. Or Who knows Latin? Audience. Angel, you know Latin? All right. Wait a minute, you're a Juris Doctorate. Yeah, that's There's what I'm thinking. Other, I mean, okay, all right. <laughs> all right, here's your question time. We'll start after I get done. What is, this is a little redundant, but you, you have this time to, you've already addressed it. What is your position on expanding Medicaid <laughs> and why? And would you be supportive of putting Medicaid expansion on the ballot? Again, you have two questions. The time is yours, however you want to use it. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. I'm not going to stop there. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to take up as much time as I can. So I talked about it from the individual level. Uh, Tobias brought it up again from the you know organizational healthcare provider level. It makes sense there as well. And I again, I just, I don't know if it's apparent enough to people that it, it helps employers, and that's a big deal too. Uh, you know, we're somewhat incentivizing people not to work. You know, if they have to spend more money, can't qualify for Medicaid, but, you know, they need health insurance. Why would they work a job where they're going to, you know, try to get employer-based uh, health insurance that costs more when they could stay home and potentially qualify for Medicaid? If we expand Medicaid, we expand access to that and allow people uh, the opportunity to apply for it and qualify uh, and get it. You know, that's, that's preventative care. That's keeping people out of the ER, which is the most expensive form of health there is, uh, which is, you know, in turns, often those costs fall back on the hospital and they actually fall back on the taxpayer and they actually fall back on those that are subsidizing everybody else's health insurance. So when folks tell me that they don't want to pay for other people's health insurance, we already are. We already are. It happens. That's how the private health insurance system works. Uh, this is a wonderful way to expand access. Uh, to so many different people, children, uh, single moms, single parents, parents in general are utterly, uh, and, and it's just, it's the right thing to do. It's as simple as that. Again, wh what are our priorities? What are our priorities? Instead of lobbying negative attacks at each other based on political differences, actually passing stuff that matters, Medicaid expansion being one of them, education being another, prioritize the right things and do the right thing. So I will say, and I know our candidates have mentioned it as well, but interestingly, this would have, uh, if all candidates were here, especially for the contested races, there would have been a one minute rebuttal uh, that you would have been able to hear some of that dialogue going back and forth. So I do want to put it out to all of you in the future, and I hope you're here and you bring others to come along as well to encourage all candidates to be here so that we truly can have a forum of debate and discussion. Uh, over time. And uh, Representative Miller, you cannot have that extra minute that you would have had for rebuttal, sir. Uh, I just thought I'd throw that out there as well. All right. Don't make it anyway. He will. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So this was for you, Tobias. And this is a long question. Um, so I'll read it and uh, we'll take it from there. What is your position on the proposed amendment to the Kansas Constitution that would require every county, except Riley County, to elect their sheriff? And if passed, what outcomes do you anticipate? You have two minutes. So I, I, I think, as I understand it, uh, the bill wants to prevent counties from uh, appointing sheriffs and, and, and leaving that office as an electable position. Is that correct or is that wrong? Yes, actually, and, and let, let me pause for just a moment. Let's pause the time and I want to for the sake of for the, our audience as well, essentially what would happen is it would prohibit the appointment of a chief law enforcement officer um, should any city or county decide to consolidate is an example um, of many, like their police department or the sheriff's department. So that would be one aspect of it, just for clarification for the audience as to that question. So you would have to pull that question and give it to someone who's been a law enforcement chaplain for 23 years. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this one yet. Uh, I have to say that one of the difficult things uh, about the law enforcement environment in which we find ourselves is a lack of uniformity in training. 
and sheriff's departments vary widely from county to county. And uh, I would personally like to see criteria introduced for who is eligible to be elected as sheriffs. I mean, you can elect virtually anybody to be a sheriff without any prior qualifications, which I find personally disturbing. And I think that it diminishes and degrades the profession of law enforcement. So however I feel about this constitutional amendment, which I have not yet studied in detail, I do feel that work needs to be done on the county level to introduce criteria that will raise the level uh, of, of, of that branch of law enforcement. Uh, I think there's too great a variance, and I think that's a problem. It's a public safety problem. Uh, and to have those offices be political, uh, especially in this environment, I think is very, very problematic, uh, given what we're dealing with. It's going to require some serious thought and thoughtfulness, and it would be good if we had people who were trained to address those issues. All right, Dr. Haskins. Your question, what is your position on how Kansas taxes should be restructured? And you have two minutes to explain our entire tax system. <laughs> uh, fairly. Uh, I, wow. Uh, that's a really broad question uh, for details on. Look, I, let me, I was instructed, do not go overextend yourself if you are uh, still unfamiliar with the rules of the game. And so I'm going to say that I am a student at heart and I am one that takes in both sides of that. I believe that if I have paid money into a system and the system has not used that money and that money should come back to me, then it is pretty binary. This tax system should follow the law and return property income tax sales tax, everything that we have the surplus for back to the people. But unfortunately, until I get into that committee and into that world, I'm not going to be able to answer that question specifically, other than I do believe that it is, it is time for us to stop counting pennies while the dollars are going out the window. And, that, and what I mean by that is that there are so many opportunities that are there that we lose sight of for the fact that we just don't want to come across the table and talk. And I know that sounds trite. I know that's not really original. Uh, you know, we should all kumbaya get along. But the other day, Sunday or, or Saturday, I was out canvassing and I got threatened to leave the neighborhood or someone would shoot. These are, these are things that are... Are, are happening in, in life right now. And so in anything that we, uh, in anything that we do moving forward as legislatures, we should have fairness and kindness in our hearts. And I look forward to the opportunity, so. So I will also say one of the reasons why we're keeping things at two minutes is we want to see if the next legislative session is going to go into June or July. And so that's also one of the criteria. So I don't have to wait when I go to Celtic Fox for a place to park downtown. Okay. The question is for you, uh, Representative Alcala. What efforts would you undertake to promote fair election laws and voting systems? Well, I think that um, I would support all efforts, but I also feel that we have a fair uh, voting system where it becomes dismantled is when we have the majority of the House, which is the Republican Party, who tells you they want to limit people that vote, your seniors, your handicapped, your homebound people that vote through advance ballots, that vote from home. So they make it harder for them because they don't allow people to go canvassing to get them to fill out the application, deliver the application form, and then during the process time, because some of these people are homebound and they don't have people or family that could go pick up a ballot and deliver it to the election office, that puts them at a disadvantage or there's a lot of ballots that sit on the table that don't get turned back in. Even though the postage is paid for back to the election office, some people wait till the last minute 
by accident or by busy lifestyles that doesn't allow that ballot to hit the election office in time. If they wait till the weekend, if they wait till the Monday before, you know, mail goes to Kansas City, comes back to Topeka. It's a very unfair process to limit who can drop off a ballot. We've had no problems with that in Shawnee County. It's a very unfair process to people and it keeps them from voting. Seniors, veterans, people that are homebound. Uh, I would put forth all efforts to try to make that change. The issue is, is that we don't have the votes. And that's what the issue is. Thank you. Okay, Representative, your question. What are your views on a woman's right to control decisions regarding her own reproductive health care? I want that one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait your turn. <laughs> um, my position on that is that uh, every person, women, men, get to control what goes on with their own body. Uh, I think that that's between a woman and her doctor, uh, for whatever reason, medical reason, whatever it is, and not between a woman and the state of Kansas and her doctor. Uh, that's, I, I, I can't be any more succinct on that. Um, I, I, I don't understand that, uh, our colleagues on the other side of the aisle, uh, and to take the example, what's what's happened in the last 24 months with the pandemic, that, and I get phone calls. I've gotten phone calls and emails from people out in Western Kansas. I don't know why they're calling me, but they call me. And they were so incensed about having to wear a mask or get a shot to prevent um, the spread of the pandemic. But yet, when it comes to women's health, uh, they're all over that. Uh, they think that uh, the uh, government knows better. And, and I, I have a hard time with that. And uh, so that, that's my answer is that uh, I believe uh, everybody uh, including women, especially women, have have uh, <laughs> have that right to control their body uh, as they see fit. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Representative Miller, yours is a math question. <laughs> Find the square root. No, nope, just kidding. Sounds like a budgetary question again, doesn't it? Okay, here is your serious question. What is your position on the proposed amendment to the Kansas Constitution that would allow the Kansas legislature to revoke or suspend any executive branch agency regulation? I pass. <laughs> I yield your time back to you, sir. Um, I was one of two Democrats that voted put that on the ballot, curiously enough. Uh, I think uh, the uh, opposition to it is uh, over-exaggerated. Uh, I believe that the legislature has a role in passing laws and the administration, the executive branch, has a role in enforcing those laws. And when uh, the executive branch has too much power that they start legislating, I have problems with that. I believe in the separation of the three branches of government. I believe in co-equal government. Uh, I was one of two Democrats. See, I'm not ashamed to have voted to put that on the ballot. I think much more has been made out of it than it deserves. I frankly don't think the passage of it or the lack of passage of it is going to change a whole lot. This is one of those things that was promoted primarily for political purposes, I didn't get caught up in the trap. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 
Well, we did have four other questions. And if you're curious what those questions are, encourage all uh, candidates to come and you could have heard uh, what we would have had tonight. So now we are moving on already, boy, time flies when you're having fun, to the very last question. And this is something that we tried a few years ago and uh, seemed to be very insightful. And that is a one, two, or three word question. So I, I ask, a, I say a word, and you'll have the time to just go wherever you want to go. Medicaid expansion. No, I'm just kidding. Not this time. What's that? Yes, I'm sorry. And you have one minute, one minute to do so. So we're going to start right here again with Derek. Let's see what your two words. Judicial branch. Uh, vote to retain all, all the members of the court. Just remember that. Um, we want to keep things how they are currently. And um, yeah, judicial branch. I don't honestly, I'm going to have to side with Kirk on this one. I'm not sure what else to say on that other than to uh, vote to retain. That's all I have. Okay, very good. All right, let's see what we have here. Gun safety. is more important than gun ownership. We need red flag laws, for example, that keep temporarily under the order of a judge guns out of the hands of people who are a threat to themselves or others. We need to make sure that gun owners are responsible as most of them in fact are. Uh, there are lots of common sense solutions. A friend of mine who's in law enforcement and led a law enforcement agency, went to a local store to see how easy it was to buy a weapon. And he said he got it faster, even with the background check, than it would take him to get a meal at any sit-down restaurant. And he was frankly shocked. The legislature last year passed a bill that allowed 18-year-olds to conceal carry. Unbelievable. One of my sons was at a party once when someone walked in off the street, another kid and shot another kid right in front of him. This is horrible. It's unacceptable. And we need to, we need to become adults and not be bullied by the NRA. That is a disgrace to gun owners everywhere. Okay, next question. Allocation. Allocation. Would you like me to use it as a part of speech? <laughs> no. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Can't we do Oscar trivia or something? I managed movies. All right. Uh, allocation. Um, yeah, I kind of allocation is, a, uh, is supposed to be fair. It's appropriate. Uh, I believe that government's role is to regulate and deregulate the quality of life deemed by the, the citizens of the state, not to define uh, what is quality of life. Uh, it is to allow choices and allow both businesses and uh, individuals to have a safe harbor when it comes to purchasing their goods and services. And it amazes me of how slow we are in recognizing the inequality of, of, of fully funding special education and mental health needs and allocating the funds that are needed for students to be successful in Kansas. Allocation, A-L-L-O. <laughs> Thank you. So when you're sitting on a platform, this is a lot more difficult than uh, maybe many of us realize. So, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I, I will say, and I'll just, you know, when we did this a few years ago, we had some fun phrases as well. Three-legged stool was one. Docking building. Those are fun too, aren't they? Okay, so I don't know if this is considered fun. I'll say the word and you tell me, uh, Representative Alcal, if this sounds fun or not. Redistricting. Save the docking building. <laughs> yeah. um, I would tell you with the redistricting that uh, we just went through, I didn't have any problem with it. I actually thought it worked out uh, very well. And of course, you got to understand I'm in a district that's surrounded by Democrats. So 
uh, it worked out for me very well anyway, and it had been hard to push me out because I'm in the center of the district. But we don't have to worry about that for another 10 years, but we also need to make sure that we're electing more Democrats into the House so we don't get pushed out of districts. I'm re referencing Shawnee County, uh, that we don't get pushed out of districts where we have no representation that see things the way we see things. And, you know, split of, of Wyandotte County and all that, I'm going to tell you that's bad because now you've split a vote and you've got people that will represent you, maybe, that won't see things the way you see things. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's see what we have here. Rank choice voting. <laughs> rank rank choice voting. Yes, y'all familiar? Okay. Uh, well, I'm kind of familiar with that. Uh, I, I, to tell you the truth, I just, uh, I, I have a problem with that. I don't know why, um, but I think that. Uh, yeah. Uh, that that's all I'm going to say on that. I I uh, I would have to study that issue a little bit more uh, to give you a better answer. So, okay, thank you. Good. It's also very difficult to summarize some of these things in one minute. Um, that's why we have a whole session, right? A whole legislative session. All right. The next question, uh, Representative Miller, teacher shortage. <laughs> yeah, I would have traded you. I was I was on an interim committee a couple of years ago on ranked choice voting, um, and yeah, I felt for you. Uh, by the way, I'm still googling allocation, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot we can do on the teacher shortage. One is we. Not, I, I hesitate to use the pronoun we. They. Can, can quit besmirching those honorable people that teach. It, it sickens me, literally. It sickens me to listen to some of the debates that are, on, that are going on nowadays about the classroom and those dedicated people who are in the classroom. They're driving people out of the industry. Money aside, money is not the issue necessarily. That they're making it miserable for the people who are taking up the banner to teach our young children. I went to Kansas State Teachers College. I was in the last graduating class of Kansas State Teachers College, and I'm proud of that. And thank you, Kirk, for mentioning what's going on at Emporia State. That sickens me as well. But let's get off the teachers' necks. We had some bills and pensions and insurance also to address the financial side of things. And I hope we take those up again as it relates to making pensions more attractive to them, uh, having some of the right, making it easier for some of the people that are currently retired to get back into the profession. Right now, it's very difficult and costly for them to come back. We're trying to get some of them back, but the laws are such that there's disincentives. There's, there's a lot we can do, but let's shut up about the job they're doing, unless we want to talk about what a great job they're doing and how thankful we are that they're doing it. Thank you. As we wrap up this evening, I would like to give just for our candidates that are here tonight, so we'll, we'll give them 30 seconds each if you all want to have the, the final word on any message you still want to share to the, with the voters. Um, you're welcome to use this time as you'd like, or I can certainly draw another another word. Yeah. I can yell. Go ahead. Yeah. So Thirty seconds. Yeah. So I talk a lot about the way that I do things and the way that I think. I'm from rural town, Kansas. I grew up with a dad that's a libertarian involved in local politics, 
didn't steer me one way or the other. I didn't know the ideas that I had were considered left until somebody told me I was left. It's whatever. I, I view ideas on their merit. I view data and that's how I would vote. Um, want to be supportive of our educators. Want to, want to cut the, the partisan bickering. Stop it. We're not children. We're adults and we're trying to make people's lives better. That should be the role of a legislator. We live in a world, unfortunately, in which community is becoming an abstract term rather than a reality. It's one of the reasons I'm running to be a representative. We have to discover, rediscover being community on the local level. This is the most important contribution we can make to politics in the United States today, because otherwise we live in abstractions in our brains, which clash rhetorically out in the public while completely missing the reality in which all of us should be living. So I am hoping that, uh, that uh, I thank you, uh, the League of Women Voters, for inviting us to this place and trying to create a sense of community by bringing problems down to the level of where we live and are. Uh, we have to strive to be community in all ways that we possibly can. So thank you for that opportunity. I wanna conclude by just talking about two things that just, so you can know who I'm about. And, and what one lesson I teach in class, and, and this is a free one for you tonight, is the most valuable resource that we have is time. Once you've spent your time, you never get it back. There are people in the back of the room that are thinking that right now, that they wish they could get their time back. Vic called me up and asked me to run. He didn't know this, but I had lost two friends uh, to COVID. And I was at a place where my oldest son is going to KU, and I was at a place where, what do I want to do with this time? Now, he also said, it was Thursday, three o'clock, right before the filing deadline. Kirk, you're not our first choice. So you have that going for me too. And I said, I hope not because tomorrow's the filing deadline. So I'm happy I'm doing this because I do feel committed to this part of my life to help others. It means a lot to me that Jacqueline is sitting up here who I met in high school and two rows back is Angel. And then over in the corner there is my buddy, Sean who has been friends since seventh grade. I talk about the Oreo, con, uh, uh, Oreo theory in which the best part of an Oreo is the center part. This is the beginning of me going into the new Oreo and I'm excited about it. I am. And it's gonna be cool when we can connect dots like this again. Thank you very much for the opportunity. You are, sir. Yep. Well, so here's how I'm going to end. I want to continue to elect our sheriffs in Shawnee County. I want to have a say so in that. I think that we need to start taxing the rich and the corporations that are turning the middle class into the working poor. We better start looking at red flag laws for gun control before something bad happens. And then we're all running to the faucet trying to fix it. I'm telling you. We cannot continue to say nothing's bad happened, nothing's happened, we're okay in Kansas. We need to, we need to look at those, look at those laws. Um, I'd like to talk about all of the things except ranked voting. I don't know about <laughs> that, but uh, education, uh, Medicaid expansion, uh, getting our teachers back in the school, those are all good things, those were things. But I want to touch on one other thing that uh, we really haven't talked about tonight, and it's kind of close to me, and that's we're not doing enough for our veterans that are coming back. Um, I know of three veterans that have come back that are not here now because of suicide. And uh, we need to do more about that. So thank you. thank you. I'd like to do some more partisan bickering. <laughs> All right, people. You showed up tonight because you care about elections and who represents you. If you're in a district where only one of the two candidates showed up tonight, I'm not one of them. If you're in one of those districts, go home, 
call the other person and ask them why they didn't show up. I'm serious. They owe you an explanation. We knew about this, what, two months ago, maybe? There was plenty of time to plan to be here as opposed to planning not to be here. And if you don't say something, if they don't hear from you, you're going to have a form that looks like this in two years and it sucks. You need a debate. You need both sides represented. You need somebody rebutting what I have to say. I welcome it. And you deserve it. But you're not going to get it unless you take that message to these no-shows and say, don't you dare run if you're not brave enough to face the voters. Oh, I have more time. <laughs> uh, one last thing. Thank every one of you for being here. Thank all the sponsors for sponsoring this. We need more of these. This is the only one we've had. I mean, we've got to do better. We've got to have an exchange of thought. That's what we're made of. And I really, really appreciate all of you who had a hand in making this happen and showing up, and particularly the League of Women Voters for all they do on voter related issues. Thank you. Thank you. So ditto what Representative Miller said. We do appreciate you all for being here. Um, I would encourage if our candidates have a couple minutes to stick around and you have some questions for them or want to visit, please do so. Thank you to the uh, library for this wonderful place to gather. Uh, if you haven't uh, prepared, be sure, to, be sure to vote and be sure to continue to educate and encourage others to do the same. Thank you. One more round of applause as we wrap up for our candidates that are here tonight. Thank you. Have a good evening.